everyone. Welcome back to Beyond the Veil of Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thanks for joining me. Excited to chat with you guys about the week ahead. This is going to be from Sunday, June 19th through the 26th. I hope everybody is doing well, um, that you guys are hanging in there in the midst of some of these uh, rather intense squares. You know, this week we're coming out of uh, Venus and Taurus's square to Saturn and Aquarius. Thankfully, this is starting to kind of fade off. We're going to really uh, enjoy, I think, Venus's move into a trine with Pluto where we get deeper into our feelings, deeper into our values, and we learn a little bit more about how we can change and transform our self-esteem, our resources, and our relationships. Later in the week, Venus moves into the mutable air sign of Gemini, and certainly we switch things up a little bit and we have some options, and the Mercury shadow is over, y'all. All in all, pretty decent uh, week that we have on tap. Um, I'm going to spend most of the um, time today actually talking to you guys about the, uh, the summer solstice chart because we have the sun moving into the sign of cancer this week. So happy birthday to all the June cancers. I uh, hope it's well for you guys. Um, and we're going to take a look at that chart and have a better understanding of what the solstice means, how it shows us what's going to be coming for the next uh, better part of the next quarter of this year, setting us up for the fall and hopefully in what seems to be a pretty fun summer ahead. So I'm kind of I'm more optimistic about some of the aspects, although I do think it's going to produce big feelings. I've noticed whenever there's like major ingresses happening um, in the in the cardinal signs, we have also seen the um, the Jupiter Moon conjunction in Aries kind of setting up. So it's bringing up this theme in this pattern of needing to initiate, start something new, being more adventurous, taking chances, um, and really focusing on our own philosophy and belief systems. And uh, just getting a little bit more active and having some fun for the for the most part. So I'm really looking forward to this week. As always, we're going to talk about um, the transits throughout the week, what's going to happen day by day. And then um, after I get through that, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of insight as to where the sun moving into cancer, uh, initiating this new phase is happening in your chart. Um, and also it's aspects that it's going to have to Jupiter and the moon, which is going to result um, with some big feelings, some big emotions, a lot of action. So we're not just going to see wherever cancer is in your chart um, highlighted. We're also going to see the squares to Jupiter and the moon manifesting as uh, more optimism, taking charge initiative. So it's going to, it's going to light up two different parts of your chart and I'll pull some cards for you guys as well and talk about what's going to be happening. So stay tuned till the end. Uh, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm a Western evolutionary astrologer. Uh, I practice astrology with a fusion of the art of tarot and clairvoyant readings. Uh, if you like my style, you like my content, make sure you hit the button below and you subscribe so you are alerted as to when I have new videos coming out. Every Sunday we do this astro weather channel, uh, I guess, <laughs> episode. <laughs> Hello. Um, and then what we're going to do is throughout the week, I'll pepper in some other stuff. I'm excited to be bringing new content onto the channel in the next week or two. I'm going to have a really fun interview that I'm going to be doing with another astrologer uh, that's pretty well known actually on YouTube. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Venus conjunct uh, Uranus and the North Node conjunctions and all of these conjunctions that have been happening leading up to the North Node Uranus with Mars. So I'm really excited. Stay tuned for that. Um, and equally, I'm going to start putting out some content this week on the channel that's going to be more about tarot, gearing up to start teaching my tarot uh, beginners course here in the next month or two. If you have not already joined my newsletter, please check out the details uh, below. You'll be able to find a link to my website. You can sign up and know when that is going live. Now, if you weren't able to um, catch me for the live beginners astrology astro 101 don't fret, we're gonna be uh, putting this on sale actually probably in the next week. Um, so it may even be by the time you're watching this live. So we'll find a way to link that in. Uh, if you guys would like to have those videos, it's gonna be a series of seven or eight actual lectures with homework, all kinds of documents, slides. It's really, really, really helpful for those of you guys who wanna learn astrology the easy way and uh, learn some of my methods. All right, thank you for letting me do that shameless plug. I gotta get it in there. All right, so um, the week kicks off on the 19th today, Sunday. Not too, too, too much going on, but I do want to talk about a rather, um, 
it can be kind of like a, an agitating aspect, okay? So this is going to be the sun in the sign of Gemini. We're just wrapping up Gemini season. Um, sun is now coming out of the square with Neptune, so where we've been a little soft or a little bit sensitive or a little unsure, now we're stabilizing. However, the Sun will be making an exact quincunx or an inconjunct to Pluto and Capricorn. This to me, um, inconjuncts um, bring out the uh, most qualities in each individual sign. So I always kind of say, um, okay, so we'd put a Gemini in a room with a Capricorn. <laughs> And the more that the Gemini is acting like a Gemini, it's throwing ideas at the wall, it's uh, a little bit of a chatterbox, it's going back and forth, it's kind of fidgety, um, the Capricorn is going to kind of snap into place and it's going to go, be on time, show up, get your work done, stop talking to your coworkers, <laughs> get off your phone. So when, when we have the aspect um, of an inconjunct, they bring out the strongest traits in one another. And they're trying to reconcile, right? Because it's not quite a trine. We see trines happening from Taurus to Capricorn. It's not quite an opposition, which would be Cancer and Capricorn. So it's this kind of funky in-between angle. What this is going to do is it's going to bring up themes of trying to identify and communicate what needs to be released, changed, or transformed. I've got to tell you, I have only uh, experienced throughout this last um, month or so having planets that have been uh, creating those in conjuncts previously to other signs. Um, it's just a lot of frustration. It's been a lot of frustration. You know, Gemini is going to be the element of air. It's changeable. So we're seeing that we're changing our actions. We're changing our daily routines. We're changing the way that we think, the way that we communicate, the way that we move around. And Pluto is basically going to be um, kind of like the heavy hitter that's standing above everything, uh, kind of dictating where we can and cannot go, what we can and cannot say. Um, and bringing up themes that can be rather heavy. Uh, so I just want you guys to be aware of that. Um, when the Sun, Queen Kung, Pluto transit takes place, usually there's like a turning point and it can feel like a mini crisis. So just be mindful like the 19th, the 20th, still kind of shaking off some of the energies from the full moon as well uh, during this time. There can also be like this feeling of uh, build up with uh, like mental pressure and we can be distracted, we can be quite fixated or obsessive on things. And there can be something that takes place this day that challenges our own personal power, right? Because the sun is about the identity, it's our will and Pluto deals with power. So what's going on right now is that we need to find a way to be able to um, compromise and we might find that there are some gray areas in our life. We might need to kind of take a step back and not make any definitive decisions at the time. Um, a positive way of dealing with this is looking at whatever the breakdown is as the golden moment and the opportunity to shift our perspective, to focus more on self um, improvement, working through uh, changes and allowing things to just kind of shift. I mean, that's what Pluto is going to do. It's interesting that it's happening right before we come into the solstice point. Um, that's always going to be um, a completion of one phase and the beginning of another. Um, but also on the same day, we're going to be seeing Pluto start to uh, receive those trines from Venus. So in the background, even though it's going to feel a little agitating, like that there's going to be some communication breakdown or that there can be some really intense, you know, exchanges with people, Venus is basically saying, I'm reminding you that we need to change and transform, perhaps by the way that we communicate, how we feel, and we need to add a little bit more love. Now then on the 20th of the week, we're going to see the moon come into conjunction with Neptune in the sign of Pisces. Dreamy, whimsical, um, definitely very intuitive, very sensitive. I'm liking the fact that it's making both a sextile to Pluto, so it's going to make us more in our emotions and our feelings, but we're going to be able to positively dissolve things. I'm also liking that it's making a sextile to Venus. So um, great for being able to socialize, great for being able to relate, uh, but the moon Neptune can have us a little bit more um, needing to find a quiet place, needing to be a little bit more reserved, resting, recuperating, meditating, chanting. It's definitely something that we see when that conjunction happens. We're gonna see a nice uh, trine also between the moon and the south node. So this is an opportunity to kind of uh, still emotionally um, purge and detox and be able to kind of heal and almost like sleep things off if that's something that we need to do. What I'm not wild about on the 20th is that we are going to be seeing um, all of these mutable squares. So 
the moon and Neptune are still in a square to the sun. Um, I'm anticipating this is going to be a day where communication is going to be a little bit more difficult. There can be some distortion, right? Mutable squares are about distortion or things changing. Just be be careful of um, what you're abs absorbing on like the 19th, 20th, 21st. There can be um, uh, distortions in videos, in news, in things that are coming out um, out in the media. It can intentionally be a little bit falsely represented. Um, so just, just be careful about what you're absorbing around these days. Then on the 21st, we're going to be seeing the uh, sun move into the sign of cancer. So here in the Northern hemisphere, it is the beginning of summertime. It's the summer solstice. Obviously in other parts of the world, you guys are experiencing uh, winter. So <laughs> hope that weather is going well for you. Um, and I wanna take a little bit of time to talk about uh, the solstice chart because I think that um, I have been trying just personally, like on my, on my off time, to look at these uh, charts and find ways to appropriately celebrate or honor these energies as they kind of come about. Obviously, we know um, when we have the summer solstice, this is the longest day of the year, the start of summer in the northern hemisphere. It is the closest that we are to the sun all year long. So it's getting hot, y'all, in parts of uh, the northern hemisphere, that's for sure, at least here where I am. And the solstice is always seen as um, a peak point, it's a climax, it's a completion. Think back to what we've been working on really since the better part of about mid-March um, when we entered into Aries season. That season was a little wonky, right? We had a stellium of planets in Pisces, we felt kind of sluggish, things weren't kind of moving. Boy, oh boy, this is going to be a solstice <laughs> that, um, is definitely going to kick everything into overdrive. Okay, so I'll get into that in a second. Um, and you know, ever since the winter solstice, the sun has been slowly growing and the days have been steadily getting longer. So when we have the summer solstice, the sun reaches this uh, peak point and it completes a cycle of growth. So you also wanna be thinking about what you've been working on changing and transforming since winter solstice, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. I know we got, we got a number of Aussies and, and uh, people who are in other parts of the globe, um, but we're seeing kind of that fluctuation and that change where we're reflecting on all the heaviness that was going on um, around the end of December of 2021. Now, if you guys remember then, we had like a Mercury retrograde shadow, Venus was going retrograde, a bunch of conjunctions to Pluto, um, it was definitely a period of intense uh, inner work and reflection, and a lot of us were uh, reviewing what our responsibilities are out in the world, and where and how do we want to be working, and how do we want to uh, be seen in terms of our career path or our titles, um, and like all those fun Capricorn things. So now we're bringing it all full circle. We're coming into cancer season, and as the sun goes into cancer, it's taking action revolving around our emotions, our security, our roots, our home. Um, it's about emotional action, right? I always tell people cancer gets a bad rap for, um, you know, oh, it's a water sign, they're heavily you know, emotional, but it's kind of like a crab, you know? They're gonna defend their shell, they're gonna defend their space. Um, so this is a time where we are having to participate more in our emotional uh, feelings and taking action. Now, um, the summer solstice also is an excellent time to reflect on peak moments in your own life. What, have accompli what accomplishments have you um, completed? What are you proud of, right? What have you been working on for the better part of the last uh, three to six months? Um, perhaps maybe there's going to be some big accomplishments in wrapping up wherever Capricorn and also Aries is in your chart. So you'll have to take a look at that. Now, um, when we look at the uh, solstice charts, I'm gonna make it exact because it's going to be exact closer to right around, right around here. So it's gonna be around, around 2 a.m. on June 21st, 2022. That's Pacific time. Obviously you wanna adjust your time zones accordingly. Um, do you have to get up and do something at that time? Not necessarily. I would say that uh, this can be a wonderful time to literally get up the morning of the 21st and do some sun salutations, right? Because the sun is going to be in Cancer, so we want to work with that energy. And it can also be about um, setting things in motion when it comes to, uh, like I said, taking emotional action or things in regards to our home and our family. 
Now we're coming into like the closing cycle with the lunar cycle actually um, in a couple days time, I think around the 20th or the 29th, if I remember correctly, the 28th, we're gonna have a new moon in Cancer. So that's gonna be a separate video, but um, sometime between the 21st and the 28th can be a wonderful time because we're wrapping up this lunar cycle. We're getting ready to come into a new moon to declutter your home, right? To declutter your emotional kind of build up. It's a wonderful time to um, focus on setting new emotional intentions. If you're looking to move, if you're looking to um, revamp your home in some way, the new moon in Cancer can help us do that. The, the, the sign of Cancer is ruled by the moon, so it's also adding an extra little oomph over the next week for us to do emotional clear out, kind of resetting and figuring out how we can nurture our inner emotional world better. So this is your chance for the next week. Clean out the garage, clean out closets, anything that you need to do that's threatening um, your ability to feel secure or safe. You know, for many people, it's going to bring up a lot of feelings in regards to um, increased uh, cost of living, housing costs, things relating to home expenses. Like this is just kind of natural but it's amplified because of the square from the moon and Jupiter. So uh, let's take a look at this chart. I wanna break it down piece by piece. Obviously I'm working with um, an Aries zero degree rising just so it's easier. I don't wanna look at the uh, Placidus. I don't wanna look at the Ascendant that way because it's gonna differ from um, you know location to location. So just to make this a little bit more digestible, I'm gonna do it with an Aries rising. Now, whenever we're looking at a solstice chart, we want to look at um, the, the rulership of the sun. I know that sounds weird, but we would call this like the dispositor. So the dispositor of the sun in Cancer would be the moon because the moon rules Cancer. So in this situation, we see the moon and Jupiter in the sign of Aries fusing, coming together in a conjunction within about three degrees. Maybe you guys remember a similar conjunction. Remember when Mars ingressed into Jupiter, into Jupiter, when Mars ingressed into Aries, and when Mars and, and um, Jupiter came together, they moved right about at the same time. I think it was like a week or a couple days apart, but the moon ingressed when Mars also went into Aries. I remember that day. I was like, oh my gosh, like who's ready to catch these fists like all day long? It was not a good situation total pure uh, primal Aries energy, you know? So um, noticing this again, we're having a, we're having a big ingress, the moon move, the sun moves into Cancer. And here we have the moon and Jupiter conjunct in the sign of Aries, ruled by Mars, which deals a lot with uh, passion, desire, cutting, severing, confrontation. It's the God of War. The point is, is that for the solstice to be beginning, uh, basically, um, as we're coming into what will soon be a dark and then a new moon cycle, and we see it conjunct Jupiter, these are big emotions and big feelings. So let's break it down a little bit. When we see um, in transits or even in a natal chart, the sun in a square to the moon. And when I say square, it's at a hard 90 degree angle. Notice that um, all of these conjunctions that are taking place in Aries are exactly uh, about, about nine houses away, okay? So when we see the um, sun square, the moon in a chart, the core self is at odds with what the emotional needs are. I always say it's interesting to watch somebody who has this natally because you can tell that almost like their actions and their emotions, they don't they don't resonate with each other. They can be saying one thing and doing another. And that there seems to be some tension or friction between their body language and how they're going about things versus how they really feel on the inside. Now, to an extent, it can be like a, you know, somebody slapping on a happy face and putting on like a really good um, show and being able to be like, no, 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 everything's good, I'm fine. But on the inside, emotionally, sometimes there can be a little bit of turmoil. So looking at this, I think that the positive of the uh, sun square moon is that if we're aware that our actions are at odds with our emotions, we're gonna have the opportunity to initiate change. We can reorient things if necessary, um, and it will give us the opportunity to look at challenges with our emotions and our behavior as an opportunity to kind of be like, okay, this needs to shift. So they're gonna work in unison. You're gonna see that wherever Aries is in your chart, wherever Cancer is in your chart, they are uh, affecting each other. They're pushing each other out of their comfort zone. Now, when we see the moon conjunct Jupiter, this is uh, traditionally like a much more um, positive, happy, optimistic 
conjunction. Uh, Jupiter does deal with expansion, happiness, joy, travel, education. So to see the conjunction between the moon, which is the emotional body, and also Jupiter, I think it's going to make us feel more happy, confident, content. Um, there is a sense of being adventurous and, and having big feelings and big emotions. Um, it's going to make us want to share these good feelings. It's great for socializing. It's great for partying, having a good time with other people. It's going to bring a lot of optimism, good fortune, and generosity. But keep in mind that Jupiter conjunctions and squares, we can overdo it. So where the sun and the square to moon and Jupiter can be... Um, uh, in a way, through kind of actions that we're initiating in Cancer, it brings out big emotions. The Moon-Jupiter conjunction can be overly, um, I think, optimistic and can have a tendency to kind of exaggerate the emotions. So under the sign of Aries, that's like getting really emotionally heated. You know, it's getting really independent, um, really adamant about travel, moving quickly. Things are going to move very quickly. Remember, this is a snapshot for the next three months. So it's telling us that in the third quarter of the year, we are essentially um, having a lot of feelings about the need to take action when it comes to our home. I'm anticipating it's going to manifest as a lot of people suddenly moving, relocating, going to new places, booking flights quickly, people who are going to have to be more independent when it comes to where they're living or where they're traveling to. And then last but not least, we've got the sun square Jupiter and um, <sighs> can be a little bit of like a double edged sword. It can make you feel extremely confident. So I think that's the good thing. The sun square Jupiter is like nothing's going to break my stride. Nothing's going to get me down. I can't accomplish anything. Um, so you can also be really proud, optimistic. There can be periods of just like lucky situations that kind of come about. But be careful with how you go about expressing that. It can manifest as being a little bit arrogant or a little cocky. Um, you know, expressing exuberance is basically uh, something that you want to watch for. Uh, we want to be um, also, you know, just critical and a little bit more realistic with what we can actually make happen. Um, so there can be a sense of, uh, you know, loss or embarrassment um, because we assume that we were going to be able to kind of hit a target or a goal that we that we may not be able to. So. I feel like um, under the guise of like self-help, fitness, wellness, moving, independence, this is really great. So if you've been feeling stuck in the areas of wherever Cancer and uh, Aries are in your natal chart, it's gonna incentivize you to basically make a change. And keep in mind, because the sun's in Cancer, it's gonna be about feeling. So I think there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna be like, you know what, I can't handle this anymore. I feel so cramped in my home. I'm not happy here, I'm moving. And then you like drive to the U-Haul and you rent your U-Haul. <laughs> it can also manifest as people being like, you know what, that's it. Um, I'm sick of feeling this way. You know, I'm finally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take matters into my own hands and I'm gonna, you know, start my own business. I'm going to go and talk to a therapist. There's there's a lot of active energy with cardinal squares. Like they can't sit down. They can't stay still. Uh, I don't know if you guys have that. I have I have quite a few uh, cardinal T squares. Jupiter's T squares, actually. I have Jupiter square my moon and I have Saturn Neptune that opposes Neptune, that opposes Jupiter. So I've seen situations where I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And I'll do it for a while. And then I get burnt out. Aries is a sign that's about initiating. It's kind of like a sprint. It's not a long distance race. So it will burn up. So it will go through spurts of, okay, now I'm doing this and now I'm not. And now here I go and now I'm taking a break. So just be mindful, pace yourselves. Um, it's not something that you want to feel like you um, need to get done all at one time. And you may feel like some of the most uh, amazing changes that you make are actually as a result of um, just this, this emotional awareness that um, nobody is going to fix things, nobody's going to save us, nobody's going to help us, um, that we need to sometimes take matters into our own hands. Okay? All right. So let's move on. We'll go on to the 23rd. Actually, the 22nd. Excuse me. Can't forget Wednesday. So on Wednesday the 22nd, the moon and Mars in Aries, okay, are going to conjunct Chiron. So we're, we're kind of a little bit more sensitive and aware, I think, of our own personal wounds. We've seen kind of Mars hovering around Chiron for the better part of the last week or so. So that's definitely been coming up for a lot of people. What I like is that this is sextiling, building into a sextile with Saturn. 
So Saturn in Aquarius is saying, um, you know, how are we reevaluating? Because it's retrograde. Our friendships, our goals. Um, what have we been working on and like learning over the last couple of months? And it's sextiling um, into Aries. So I think there's like a lot of opportunity to reevaluate how, how far we've come, and that can also um, incentivize us and get us excited about where we're going. But still, watch as the Moon conjuncts Mars. It is going to get a little heated. That can uh, make people a little bit more short-tempered. There can be a little bit more agitation. Um, there can definitely be a sense of uh, being more accident-prone when it comes to working with uh, things that are hot or sharp. So just be mindful of that. Um, and then, on, then we're also going to see, um, excuse me, a square from Pluto and Capricorn. So, you know, yeah, the moon will cross Mars. It'll come into a square with Pluto. That's gonna be uh, later in the day. So that's gonna be a little uncomfortable. I don't know about you guys, but like, you know, I've noticed that, especially in like Gemini season, the uh, squares and the inconjuncts to Pluto have been louder than usual. I don't know if you guys have been feeling that, but uh, perhaps maybe we're gonna feel this a little bit more because we've, we've got some placements now that are in some, some cardinal signs, Jupiter, Chiron, Moon, Mars, the Sun, Pluto. So this is going to bring up, right, coming into Cancer season, we'll see, it's going to be a ways away, but the Sun will eventually oppose Pluto, and that's going to represent something that we need to kind of kill off. Also, uh, in the next uh, week or two, we're going to see Mars come into a square with Pluto. So now we're moving out of all this like mutable energy. Now we're moving into cardinal, which is going to be like, okay, hurry up, let's get going. So you guys are going to definitely kind of feel the intensity kind of turn up a little bit this month. Uh, okay, so then on the 23rd, we're going to see the moon in Taurus come into a sextile with the sun in Cancer. I'm a fan, okay? I'm a fan because I feel like this is going to be the nice little reprieve. Here we go. You'll see in the early hours of the 23rd, moon exalted in the sign of Taurus, comfortable, stable, little stubborn, but you got you to you take your wins when you can with the astrology this year. And with the, the moon in a sextile to the sun, um, it's basically saying that our emotions and our actions are harmonizing. Earth and water sextiles, lovely. I think this is going to be a much more stable day. Um, and this is, this is the day, honestly, that's my favorite day all week. I mean, I would say later, later Saturday and Sunday, there's some good aspects too, but I feel like this is when we're gonna stabilize a little bit. We're also going to see that Venus is going to move into the mutable sign of Gemini. So Venus is still in a trine to Pluto. It's coming out of it now that it's gonna move deeper into Gemini. But if you're a Gemini sun, moon rising, if you have Venus in Gemini, this will be your Venus return. Um, now we're getting Venus out of the kind of stable, sensual, um, earthy sign of Taurus. Now it's in Gemini where it wants to move around. It wants options. It wants pretty words. It wants to be able to communicate. It wants to be able to socialize. Now, similar to what we saw as the sun went through the sign of Gemini and Mercury will as well, um, sun, Mercury, Venus, they're all going to try and Saturn within this cycle. And it's gonna be interesting because we start kind of upgrading um, how we look at relationships. Communication becomes really important when we have Venus in a, uh, a mutable sign. And it's a sign that's traditionally ruled by Mercury. So it's interesting that we've got Mercury and Venus that are gonna be in that same sign. So like I said, pretty words. Um, but also those, those sextiles that we're seeing between those two placements to Jupiter is, um, very communicative, very positive, very optimistic, very exciting. So similar to how Mercury sextile Jupiter has brought good news, Venus sextile Jupiter is also going to be really positive for being able to relate to other people, travel, uh, communicate more sweetly. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that. Probably, like I said, my favorite day is going to be the 23rd. Then on the 24th of the week, we're going to see uh, the moon come into a conjunction in Taurus with Uranus. So obviously there's going to be some emotional sparks going on. And then it's also going to conjunct the North Node. So moon, Uranus, North Node is how we are liberating ourselves emotionally. Look for this to be the day that's going to be quite colorful when it comes to the markets and resources and finances. 
I'm not one to be like, oh, I told you so, because we never know. Like with astrology, we can talk about what the cosmos are saying may materialize, but we don't know. I've been watching what's been going on the last week. You know, we've seen like Fed interest hikes, all kinds of chaos in the crypto world, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and other coins have been all over the place. There's been some real dives in the market in general, certain platforms that are limiting uh, trading and exchange. This is very much the Venus square Saturn that I told you guys about. My concern is that possibly as the moon comes into conjunction with Uranus in the North Node and squares it again, we see similar things, right? We might see similar things. So watch for that. Um, it can be correction. So I'm not saying that it's going to it's going to tank further, but um, there, there can be some corrections and things that can be happening. So that's going to be an interesting day. A, an opportunity, I think, for also for many of us collectively to just be mindful of where um, materialism, greed, focus on uh, security, hoarding, holding on to things is coming into friction, right, with what Saturn is saying, which is saying uh, release, let go, simplify, you know, focus on groups and numbers. Um, so we actually, I've noticed there's a lot of like emotional and personal financial upsets that happen when the moon comes into Taurus because of its conjunction to Uranus in the North Node, especially now that Venus has left the, sign, the, the square with Saturn. So I have a feeling there's going to be more news about food shortages or some kind of financial setbacks, and it's going to be really rattling a lot of people. Um, and it's going to come into that square with Saturn. So not the best day for like financial transactions. The 24th and the 25th of June are a little dicey. We're also going to be seeing that, um, you know, Saturn's retrograde. It's coming. It's coming back into a square with with Uranus, and it's still in a square to uh, the north and the south node. We're we're, we're losing it because it's going to drop down in degrees, but it's it's still hanging there pretty strong. So we feel that vibrationally when the moon goes through that placement. Then on the 25th, we're going to see the moon move into the sign of Gemini. I like it. Um, we're going to see a reactivation of the eclipse point first, though, in the morning. So pay attention to that because there is an eclipse there. That's the polarity of the eclipse that we just had in Scorpio, the same one as last year. And when the moon reactivates that with the square to Saturn, we're still feeling it. I can only explain it by telling people, at least in my experience, it's been this realization that's like, in order to have freedom in the Taurus part of my chart, I have to be willing to really focus on what Saturn is telling me in Aquarius. So you may see upsets in the Taurus part of your chart. It's reinforcing the need to go deeper into where Saturn and Aquarius is and to focus on that work. So like I said, later in the day, we're going to see the moon move into Gemini. That'll be in the evening hours. Not a bad period of time. We're going to see actually, uh, what is the 25th? The 25th is going to be Saturday. So the moon moves into Gemini, conjuncts Venus, wonderful for like date night, wonderful for uh, maybe like going to like a drive-in movie, going for a drive, getting out of town. It's going to make that sextile to Jupiter. So yeah, not, not a bad, not a bad day. Starting to really feel more of the sun square Jupiter, which is kind of going to be building. So there can be a sense of overdoing it. Um, but yeah, I guess actually Saturday is a decent day as well. And like I said, moon coming into conjunction with Venus is going to create this sweetness, sweet communication, um, and it's sextiling Jupiter. Now, in the later evening hours going into the next day, then we're going to see the moon come into conjunction with Mercury. Here we go. And moon Mercury in Gemini, as it's building, uh, these two planets are going to be building into a trine with Saturn. We're out of the, the Mercury shadow. It's done. So if you are like, hey, I want to I want to sign a contract. Um, I want to finally move or I've made up my mind or I've made a decision. When the moon comes into a trine with Saturn um, sometime on the 26th going into the 27th, good time to do it. And the days to follow also when Mercury is coming into a trine with Saturn as well. A lot of the uh, issues in communication or agreements that have been held up as a result of the Mercury retrograde now can kind of be corrected. So when the moon conjuncts uh, Mercury and Mercury is in the sign uh, that it rules, there's going to be more communication than usual. And to me, it looks like it could be quite positive or optimistic. My goodness, like if you're a Gemini, Venus, Moon, you know, uh, and uh, Mercury all in your sign, Gemini risings especially, 
um, just having a lot to say and maybe feeling like you're ready to kind of come out of your cave <laughs> or maybe you're feeling a little bit more communicative or you're feeling a little bit more comfortable now. All right, guys, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, I would like now to get into talking about all of the 12 signs. So obviously uh, this is gonna be for Western astrology. So you wanna look at it from a Western perspective. We're gonna talk about how this is affecting each and every one of the rising sun and moon signs. I recommend we're using your rising sign. It's gonna talk to you literally about where this is gonna manifest in your life. Although you may resonate with your sun sign as well. So you can go back and forth. Um, if you're somebody who likes to listen to your progress chart, you can do that as well. It's choose your own adventure. Um, and if you happen to be into Placidus, you might need to listen to both. I know that there's quite a few people who uh, like using that system. It's my opinion that Placidus talks more about the psychological effects and then um, whole sign might talk about what literally happened. So, so there is, there is uh, a sense of both of them kind of ringing true. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the sign, where the action is taking place in your chart, which is gonna be cancer, and where the big emotional push is coming from and where you're going to see something come about that can be positive or optimistic, lucky, um, that's gonna project you forward in the cancer part of your chart. You can find this by looking up your chart information online on a uh, natal chart calculator. You just need to put in your time, your date, and your exact location of birth. Uh, make sure you notate the AM or the PM. It'll cast your chart and you wanna look from the nine o'clock hour forward. If you don't know how to do that, if that's something that sounds like uh, Latin to you, consider booking a reading with me. I'd be happy to chat with you. I offer full and half hour sessions. I'm um, always welcome to talking to new clients. I'm booked out till August. It's busy, y'all. So if you want to get a reading, definitely get on my list. Uh, if you go on my website, my calendar is live and you can reserve one-on-one -on -one time with me on a Zoom call. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to start with Aries and Aries rising. So Aries, you have the sun that's in Cancer and it's in your fourth house. So it's bringing up the themes of your family, perhaps your children, uh, maybe family coming to visit, maybe your home where you, where you feel emotionally safe, what have you. And the moon is going to be um, in the sign of Aries. It's in your sign. So especially for Aries rising, moon Jupiter on your ascendant is going to come into a square with the sun. So it can have you feeling actually quite joyful, quite optimistic, happy to have family coming and stay with you, happy to be traveling uh, to go and visit family in another place, um, really excited if you're looking at moving or trying to kind of set something up in your home. You're going to probably be the one in the house that's taking the initiative to move all the couches, sweep everything, make the room feel bigger. Um, or maybe you're just really excited and optimistic about um, maybe having like a family gathering. So look for expansion in your home and your emotions. If you're looking for somewhere new to live, it looks positive and that you are on the hunt. Okay. The card that I got is the three of swords. Wow. I can only imagine, and I've seen this, I've seen this for quite a few Aries Risings. I can only imagine that this is you being like, I have to go home because there's a situation at home and I need to be there for a family member. Or um, you being like, it breaks my heart to uh, move away from my, my hometown or uh, just difficult things that you're going through in regards to moving on to something bigger or better. The, traditionally, this is a card that talks about heartbreak. So it can be that um, if you've been going through a difficult situation or if you've been feeling kind of down in the dumps, that moon Jupiter on your ascendant during the time of the solstice is gonna be like, I'm not feeling sorry for myself anymore. I can't continue to stay in this house. I gotta get moving. I gotta make changes. I gotta break with the past. Uh, so if that's something that you're going through, Aries sending you lots of love, know that this card only comes up when it's time to release something, release the pain which I could see possibly happening, you know, but, but it would more come under the guise of like leaving the past behind or like leaving your home, right? So now we've got Taurus and Taurus rising. We've got a lot of action with the solstice and the sun moving into your natal third house. So this is gonna highlight what you're learning, how you're communicating, uh, stuff pertaining to vehicles, short distance trips, aunts, uncles, cousins, and siblings. Um, there can be more of an emphasis in you needing to do more work online also, Taurus. I could see that. Um, or feeling like there is a sense of 
um, needing to do more work within the home base. So maybe it's like there's just a lot of busyness going on. Maybe you're focusing on juggling a couple things within the home base because the sun is there. Sorry, I just lost my notes here. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and then also, um, we see the, the ingress of Jupiter and the moon in Aries. Now that's gonna be moving into your 12th house, okay? That's the hidden zone. That's like the bedroom, that's where you're sleeping. Maybe it's like your sleep patterns are interrupted a little bit because you have a lot on your mind and you're like really focused on getting work done and staying busy. Um, to some extent though, I think the square between the third and the 12th house can also be expanding your intuition and also expanding anything in regards to um, just ideas that are coming to you sometimes in the middle of the night, needing to kind of get up, work, make notes, write things down. It can also be expanding your spiritual beliefs or your spiritual practices. So I would say with the sun going through your natal third house, if you're anxious at all, uh, breath work, breathing exercises, uh, anything in regards to maybe tapping. Um, some of you guys may be contemplating or having anxiety about, am I gonna have to move? Where am I gonna be living, right? Because it is highlighting that third house. The third house is movement. So it can be about asking for guidance also and, and finding ways to, to uh, stay a little bit more better tapped into your higher self so that way you have more confidence in uh, how you're making decisions if you do have to move or start something new. The card that I get is the Eight of Coins. So this is a positive card. It says you're working hard, uh, perfecting something. So I'm wondering, are you working hard in the back room or an office? Are you editing something? Um, is there something going on where you're just like, I have to get this work done and you're, you're putting a lot of effort into it and it's also going to have a lot of reward. I would say Jupiter in your 12th can make you kind of moody um, and with the moon being in there, if you need a little bit of alone time so that way you can kind of get your work done before you're ready to communicate or talk to people. Sometimes it's just with this square, putting your phone on airplane mode, le like legitimately, or, or do not disturb so you have a period of time where you're not feeling like you're being overly mentally stimulated by having to juggle a couple of things at one time and talking to people, okay? Looks good, Taurus. Gemini and Gemini rising, you've got the sun and cancer moving into your natal second house. Now the solstice is gonna be there, so it's setting a new uh, phase in motion for you when it comes to your resources, the money that you're working hard for and what you're bringing in and whether or not you feel secure with the money that you're bringing in. Now there's gonna be a square to the moon and Jupiter in the 11th house, which deals with friendship. So I see lots of opportunity for you to expand your financial goals and security perhaps with the help of a friend. So I, I get the impression that if you're wanting to make more money, if you're looking for a job opportunity, a friend may come in and go, hey, I've got something for you. Are you available? When can you start? It can also be a time where um, you're really feeling like you're emotional and you're really attached and you're really thankful for the friends that you have and maybe a friend encourages you um, and it helps give you a little bit more of like a, a pep talk um, or something that's gonna raise your spirit so you feel confident in something that you've been working on. Uh, but for the most part, I feel like a friend may come into the rescue. So if you're feeling like you need some more resources, you know, I gotta tell you, Gemini, you got Mercury, you got Venus in your sign. It's all about communicating and whether or not you're willing to accept the help that people are going to offer you. Wow, of course you would get the Ace of Pentacles, wouldn't you? Uh, with that um, solstice point being in, your, being in your second house. I mean, it's about resources. It's about an offer, um, something that's coming that you can't say no to, something that's gonna be the beginning of a new phase. Some of you guys are looking for um, help possibly in purchasing, buying a home, paying home off, applying for a loan or a mortgage. That can come from a group or a friend. Um, but this can also be about you realizing like, wow, I've got, I've got people I can really rely on. They're very valuable, okay? Good luck, Gemini. Cancer and Cancer Rising. Well, this is, this, is your, uh, this is your time, babe. You know, the sun moved into your sign. So the sun is hanging out somewhere around your first house, really highlighting who you are, the relationship with your body. You might be feeling a little bit more emotional than usual. You can be feeling a little bit more action oriented. The sun in your sign is just all about you. Here's the deal. The moon and Jupiter is like kind of assaulting you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be honest reinforcing the fact that in order for you to feel more safe and stable and secure, right? Remember the sun is the ruler of your, of your second house. So it's about money. 
In order for you to make things happen, it's about leaping into action, sometimes taking a leap of faith, taking a new job, starting your own business, launching a project. There is gonna be something that's gonna come up where you're gonna be like, okay, here goes nothing. Like, I don't know how it's gonna pan out, but I just gotta get it going. That energy of the Mars-Jupiter conjunction for all 12 signs is still hovering. It is, is still saying, we gotta be courageous, we gotta get going. I know a lot of you guys are afraid to start a new position. I know a lot of you guys are really putting focus and emphasis on making more money, but I gotta tell you something, you're coming into a very strong period. So focus on expanding your financial goals and your security. Um, I think it's really important for you to expand responsibilities in the workspace, to be fearless. And if that means you gotta start your own thing, you gotta start your own thing, as long as it's something that you are passionate about. Which makes sense, right? Having the moon and Jupiter going into the 10th is like, I gotta feel emotionally inclined to wanna do this, right? It might be that like a switch flips and you're like, I really love this and like this has to be what I do for the rest of my life. Um, such an amazing transit that you guys are going through. You know, also next year we're going to see the eclipses start in Aries and it's going to really, really sh show you that next year you can be doing what you want to be doing for a living and you are not going to be just um, trying to survive. You're going to thrive. Get right with how you feel about things emotionally at work. If you're feeling like something's not working or something's at odds, focus on the Ace of Cups, which is saying um, filling your cup up, uh, being able to experience love and harmony and, and really enjoying whatever it is that you're starting because you're starting something new, but it has to come from probably you getting sick of your own shit. I mean, that, there's going to be a lot of this for people throughout this transit. It's going to kind of bubble up and it's going to go, eh, I can't do this anymore, so I got to make a change. All right, so be courageous, Cancer. You can do it. For Leo and Leo rising, I uh, hope you're doing well, Leo. You know, the sun's moving into your 12th house. This is kind of like that karmic wind down that happens right before your birthday season. So you might be feeling a little in your head. You might be feeling a little sensitive that you kind of need to hide out a little more. Maybe there's some stuff going on also with home or family figures kind of behind the scenes. So as the solstice starts in your 12th house, it's also coming into a square with Jupiter and the moon in your ninth. Makes me feel like you're catching flights if you have feelings. I know I keep saying this for, for, for Leo, but there's a lot of energy that's about you being like, I need to go to a retreat, I need to be somewhere else, I need to be somewhere where I'm safe and secure that I can heal and work through something. The positive is that I think that it's gonna be expanding beliefs and uh, prepping you for travel or prepping you for new belief systems, new practices, and also kind of getting ready to prepare you and give you a, a clean slate right before you have your birthday. I could see some people going into like new uh, training or there's some kind of teaching or maybe you're going on retreats or you're adopting like a new spiritual belief or you're completing a program or like some of you might go, that's it, I'm buying the tickets or you know, I'm gonna set aside the time at the end of this year to go through this training. These are the things that might kind of get triggered um, a lot for you over the next couple of months as a result of the solstice. The magician. So this is about creating your own reality. There can be a sense of you being like, you know what, I may not be totally thrilled with what's going on right now, but I need to focus on um, making, making magic happen. So what I love about the magician is it says as above, so below. So some of you guys might be getting really into like dream interpretation, astrology, um, you know, manifestation techniques, anything in regards to, um, getting into the vortex as Abram Hicks says, right? Getting into the vortex and being able to focus on, um, your beliefs and, and bringing in more of what it is that you want in your life. Sometimes that requires you to, you know, undergo a new training or adopt a new philosophy or a practice. Sometimes it means that you need to go to a place and you need to clear your head so you can focus on what you're bringing in. So with this card coming up, it's saying that you have all the tools basically, um, you know, ready to go. You have everything available to you to be able to make some of this stuff happen. So focus on that, believe in magic, know that uh, there are things that are starting to manifest, but they haven't quite come into reality quite yet for you, okay? All right, so now we've got Virgo and Virgo rising. Hope you're well. Well, the sun's moving through your 11th house. Uh, you're gonna see a solstice there. Um, that's going to be setting the stage for uh, more focus and emphasis on um, how you're nurturing your goals, how you're nurturing your friendships, right? It's about socializing and it's coming into a square also with um, the moon and Jupiter in Aries during this period. 
This is telling me that there's gonna be changes in intimacy and expansion into new friend groups. Maybe you have a new relationship, so there in turn you're meeting their friends and you're kind of merging and you're like, wow, it feels good to socialize again. It's about getting out of your comfort zone, right? There can also be a sense for you of um, if you are single, kind of mingling with new people, meeting new people, new networks, um, and finding that there is this profound shift in regards to the way that you look at friendships and the fact that you can bring new friends in, that you don't have to be shy or afraid of connecting with new individuals. On the flip side, this can also be changes in intimacy. So you might be realizing that your goals are to um, actually have a partner and be able to share um, your life and your goals and your aspirations with them, to have them meet your friends. You might realize also that it's important for you to get on the same page with a partnership in regards to money, resources, saving. So you're gonna experience lots of changes in terms of merger with another person, uh, intimacy, and also friends in general. It can have you in your feelings, Virgo, okay? Because I know that the sign of Aries kind of rubs you the wrong way, um, and it's gonna make you like, kind of analyze things more and be like, I don't know, are they going to like me? Like, is it a good idea? Like, am I going to be accepted in this group? Like, what if I go to this party and I don't make friends? Watch out for that kind of thought pattern. Like we want to clear that out. And um, I'm pretty sure you're going to end up either making a new friend or through a potential re relationship, like meeting new people. And that person's going to be like, don't worry, they're going to love you. Like everything's going to be fine. So stay open to new networks and connections. The card that I get is the lover. So it's interesting because you got a lot of uh, Virgo, you have a lot of Gemini going through your 10th house right now. And maybe your mind is at work and you're kind of being torn in one direction and you've got you know opportunities that are saying, hey, it can't be all work or no play. Um, this can also be about romantic connections that can happen on a whim. You go out and you have dinner with a group of friends and you meet someone and it might end up being somebody you have a strong connection with. It may materialize as just realizing like, wow, as I'm going through a period of intense change and transformation, it's nice to have friends that have my back and can be there and support me as I'm going through this. So it's about communicating, expressing, expressing your appreciation and your love for some of these people. All right, so for Libra and Libra rising, you have got um, the sun and cancer going into your 10th house. This is going to be the solstice point. So you're wrapping up what you've been working on for the last three months in relationships. Now you're moving more into your career zone. So as the sun goes into your 10th house, more busyness revolving around that. Um, there is going to be like for the next three months, more of an emphasis on this area of your life. 10th house isn't just career, it's your status in the world. So being that cancer is there, it's what are you nurturing, right? How are you nurturing yourself? How are you nurturing other people? And it can also deal with like parenting themes. So we've got Jupiter and also the moon in your natal seventh house. So we see friction between the seventh and also um, the tenth. Similar, I, I guess I should have said, all of the, the, the um, cardinal signs are gonna feel this big time, especially if, it, if you have cardinal placements within the first 10 degrees. So um, Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn, you guys are all going to feel this pretty, this ingress pretty intensely um, because it's going to create squares in your angular houses. Okay, so Libra, sun's in the 10th, highlighting career. You've got the moon and Jupiter in your seventh. <laughs> Libra, if you are a Libra who is single, um, this is probably going to be a situation where you're almost catapulted into what might be a relationship very quickly. Keep in mind, it doesn't need to happen on this day. It's saying, hey, over the next three months, this is where there's going to be action. So you're going to work. You're focusing on your career. What is that doing that's putting you out in the world? You might meet someone. Um, it's also possible that you're partnering with new people because of work. So you're taking on new business partners, you're traveling more because Jupiter is there, you're talking to a lot of people, maybe you have to travel for work Libra, maybe you're going to other cities. Um, that can materialize as a romantic partnership. So Moon Jupiter in the seventh is people who are like, hey, want to work together, want to go out to dinner. Um, so just keep in mind, this is expanding partnerships in the workplace and career status. So it can also be that if you are somebody who has a business partner or you work with a spouse or a romantic partner, you're going to see that there is just lots of togetherness, lots of focusing on communicating, lots of traveling together, plans for travel, sometimes education, lots of meetings. And it's also just going to put you front and center in your career. OK, so it's going to it's going to be intense. You have to find the balance, um, but I know that you will. And I'm sure that um, in some ways your focus on your career and your drive can actually bring you closer with other people. 
The card that I get is the Ace of Wands. So it's really saying, pay attention to Aries. <laughs> <laughs> which I was thinking anyway, but you know, that's the, that's going to be for you, Libra. Um, it's going to be showing you, I think that people can move in very quickly and they can be like, come on, let's go. So you can feel rushed in a way like partners are rushing you or, uh, people want to, uh, you know, get on the phone with you immediately or have you meet them places quite quickly. Uh, but it's exciting. It's passionate. It's creative. And I think it's going to make way for lots of opportunities for new projects, new life, um, and expanded kind of like sexual connection. For Scorpio and Scorpio rising, you have got uh, the solstice happening and the sun is moving into your ninth house in Cancer. It's a fellow water sign, so I think you're going to dig it. Um, it's going to it's going to play very nicely with your placements in Scorpio. You have also got the moon and Jupiter in Aries moving into your natal six, Scorpio. To me, this feels like you're changing your beliefs about your schedule and what is possible when it comes to your work schedule. Are you learning something new? Are you learning about health and wellness? Are you experiencing delays when it comes to uh, teaching, education? Are there delays also when it comes to travel? It's possible. The sixth house is a house that can be dealing with setbacks, delays, challenges, health stuff sometimes. Aries, it's more about your body and how your body is um, possibly having some issues in this department, which is prompting you to want to go and learn more with the sun and cancer in your ninth. So you may be wanting to learn more about, well, what natural treatments can I use on my skin? Or how can I change my diet in a way that is going to um, give me more energy or vitality? How can I do that at home? There can also be, like I said, a lot changing in regards to your beliefs with your schedule, because when we see friction and squares between the sixth house to the ninth, there can be delays with travel. It can be like, I got sick and like now I can't, you know, fly out. Or it's situations where your, your uh, work that you have kind of set up for yourself in your daily routine is coming into friction with actually being able to go other places. So you're gonna feel a little swamped. It's gonna be like, how do I balance everything? But the key here is realizing that the moon and also Jupiter in the six is like, look, you have these, these are good problems to have Scorpio. If you're complaining that you have too much work and that you don't know how you can fit other things in, add a little bit of appreciation, be humble, right? Take time every day to be like, thank you universe for providing this for me and being able to allow me to have these experiences. Um, and maybe a little bit about restructuring your daily routine so you can find more time either for fitness or for appreciation for prayer and for spiritual work, okay? So let's see what the tarot says for you, Scorpio. Temperance, hi, this is the tarot, like being like, find your balance. This is also associated sometimes with, uh, with the sign of Sagittarius or Jupiter. So I think it is saying to you, it's about finding balance, uh, taking time, like allowing things to come together at the right time. You can't rush healing. You can't rush traveling. Uh, you can't rush projects. It's saying like, you know, everything will kind of come together at the appropriate time. I love this card because it, it also talks about healing and the fact that maybe you need to add a little bit of um, belief into your uh, physical practice, right? So you can just go to the gym, go to the gym, go to the gym, and you can get results. But if you're like, something's lacking, throw a little yoga in there, throw some Tai Chi in there, something that's going to be incorporating more spirit into your daily routine so you can feel that, that healthy balance of mind, body, spirit, you know? Good. Uh, now we've got Sag and Sag rising. What's up, Sag? You've got the sun in Cancer, the solstice, that is moving into your natal eighth house. So this is a period of transformation, right? It's what am I changing and transforming? It can be a period where you can be a little bit more um, sensitive. You can be a little bit more critical, especially of either your home life, your family. Maybe you're adjusting to changes that are going on in the home more fixated on resources and maybe money that you've spent or that there's been a lot of money that's kind of gone out recently. Um, this is in friction to the moon and Jupiter in Aries, which is in your fifth house. I kind of chuckle because I feel like this might be about you realizing like, oh, I spent a lot of money. I've been spending a lot of money on the house. You know, home expenses are really extreme. How can I have fun? 
Um, but I think it's also about opening the heart and being open to uh, merging and focusing more on intimacy with other people, emotional intimacy, not so much physically, um, and kind of sharing where you might feel a little sensitive. Uh, but I say the heart opening because it's squaring moon Jupiter in the fifth house. So uh, opportunities, obviously for sexual intimacy as well, but um, having more than just the physical connection, needing that emotional connection as well. So you may be feeling like you're moving quite quickly in a romantic relationship or you've met somebody and you got excited about them. Um, but then it's like, oh, I don't know. That's scary. You know, I don't really know if I want to open up. That'll come up during this period. There can also be increased uh, costs or things pertaining to hobbies. If you're self-employed, there can definitely be some like tax stuff that's coming up with this square um, or increased costs for children, okay? So any one of these things can happen. Investments are possible as well, taking a chance. Mars and, excuse me, moon and Jupiter in your fifth. Squaring the moon is like, you know, uh, do I want to take a chance and invest in something? You know, do I do I want to take a little bit of money that I've been saving for a rainy day and throw it into a slot machine or buy stocks or something like that? You're going to feel impulsive about whether or not you're secure with the decisions that you're making. So pay attention to that. Uh, the card that I got for you, Sag, is Five of Swords. So I feel like this is more about you learning to communicate. It's that it's not that you don't want to um, be emotionally available. It's just that you've been hurt in the past. And there can be some child, you know, inner wounds from childhood that can come up also. I think the Five of Swords is about like laying your weapons down. So it can also be about this point in time where um, you really want to take note to like the walls that you're building up that you're you know kind of putting out there that keep you separate from another person. This is not fighting it, right? This is putting, laying your weapons down, uh, not challenging things, not arguing, not getting confrontational. Certainly when the sun is in the eighth house, there is this theme of sometimes feeling emotionally threatened um, and perhaps maybe involves like a younger person or a romantic person and you have to find new ways to respond, especially if you're getting triggered from something in the past, okay? So stay open, be willing to merge with other people and be practicing intimacy. Intimacy is not limited to physical touch, okay? For Capricorn and Cap Rising, we've got the sun in Cancer and this is the solstice that is marking something new for you in your house of relationships. So it's going through your seventh house. It's coming into a square with uh, the moon and also Jupiter in your natal fourth. Okay, so yes, this can be emotional showdowns, right? With romantic partners, with family members. It can, seventh house airs stuff out. But I believe that partners are coming into your life saying, hi, is it time to break with the past? Hi, do you wanna go on a trip? Do you wanna move? Do you wanna relocate? Like these are positive things. Yes, you're gonna feel it quite intensely, like all the, all the cardinal signs are but these are good changes. It's moving you to expand. So relationship expansion, opportunities to partner or live with another person. Somebody might say, well, you, do you wanna do this or not? It's gonna be easier for us to be together if you move in, so just move in. Or um, I'd like to spend more time with you, so you know, why don't you come and stay with me for the summer? You may be feeling inclined to also find your own space um, because, you know, I think that it's it's very likely with the moon and Mars being there that if you feel like you're in too tight quarters with another person, um, maybe it's easier for you to find your own space. So if you are too close to somebody, yes, it can bring up situations where things can pop. Keep in mind, Capricorn, Mars is moving also through the sign. It's going to come into a square with Pluto. So this may actually be the very beginning of you either getting ready to cut off a family situation end a living situation, make a decision whether or not, you know, you're willing to go back to the past or if you're willing to entertain the past in any capacity, uh, tread lightly over the next month because you're definitely going to see, I think, a lot of stuff come up that's going to bring up this theme of in order to move forward in relationships, you either have to address a domestic or a family matter or say goodbye to the past. Ace of Coins. Who else got this? Gemini? Um, obviously this is talking about physical gains, right? So it can be talking about making more money. Woo, gonna move. It can also be talking about um, somebody offering you something. So it could be somebody saying, hey, you know, I'll pay your sublease, you know, go and find a new place. Hey, you know, come and stay with me. It's gonna be more cost, of, cost efficient. I'm wondering for Capricorns and Capricorn Risings if the moon Jupiter is gonna be about you guys making the decision that you're gonna be investing in a new home 
or uh, somebody gives you money or somebody says, let's buy it or let's flip it together, right? This is physical gains, physical movements. This is really positive if you're an earth sign because it's saying that you're gonna see the shifts that you want, but this is just the very beginning. We have Aquarius and Aquarius rising. Um, this is exciting. So this is going to be the sun and cancer moving into your sixth house, which is going to make you feel like, okay, you know, going to get stuff checked off my to-do list. There's more of an emphasis in me focusing on how I feel emotionally. If I need to rearrange uh, the kitchen, rearrange the home, stuff like that, uh, see the doctor, take the dog to the vet. It's in friction to moon Jupiter in Aries in your third. So other than getting your to-do list done, it's making time for health and further learning. So it's like how you can take it upon yourself to rearrange your schedule so you feel like you have more freedom. I think you're gonna be feeling really adamant about telling people and communicating with people about your schedule and what works and what doesn't because you've got the moon Jupiter in your third house and it's squaring the fourth. Especially if you're trying to get to a point where you're feeling like, you don't have to be on the phone all the time or you're not doing something all the time. So you're creating more time for your family or you're creating more time for your emotional well-being. Um, but I would say make a to-do list. You're going to get a lot done over the next three months as a result of this uh, solstice. And it's setting things in motion for you to be able to communicate and tell people when you are or not, when you are or are not available. Also watch, there can be things coming up in regards to uh, needing to make tune-ups of the vehicle, or you might hear from a relative or a family member that they're kind of dealing with a health issue and they're like, can you come help me, right? Can you help me clean this up? Can you take me to the doctor? There can be more busy uh, stuff in regards to that as well. Card that I get is the King of Coins. So I'm wondering, is this like with a father or a father figure? Or is this just you being more assertive and being more forthcoming about the fact that time is money? <laughs> You know, <laughs> you don't want to feel like you're running around doing stuff all the time. Maybe it's a matter of realizing that you can get a lot more done uh, by hiring somebody, you know, to especially cancer in the six, walk the dog, clean your house, you know, cook your food, pre-made meals, things like that can kind of come up. That's making it easier for you to kind of go about your daily routine. Maybe it's getting an assistant, whatever it is, it's about taking care of business and feeling more solid and more in charge. And then we've got Pisces. So Pisces, hope you're doing well. Uh, we've got the um, sun moving into Cancer, the solstice point that's taking place in your natal fifth house. Now it's in a water sign, so it's gonna be friendly for your placements in Pisces. Um, you're going to see that it's gonna come into friction with the moon and Jupiter in your natal second house, which is about money and resources. So, I can see some Pisces uh, kind of partying a little bit, spending a little bit of money, uh, feeling a little bit more inclined to indulge, um, especially with the moon and Jupiter coming together. Jupiter is your traditional chart ruler if you're a Pisces rising, so I could see you being like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy all the things. You're gonna, you're gonna click buy on the, on the cart that you've been holding on to on your computer. Um, with the sun being in the fifth house, it's about. Um, having fun. It's about being creative. It's about children, younger people. So I think the sun being there is putting an emphasis on some of this stuff for you. It can also be about children, right? Cancer can be about parenting. Um, and the fifth house can be about babies with the square to the second. Pisces and Pisces risings, like be mindful, super fertile with this transit. Some of you guys will be spending money on having fun, having some date nights. Um, some of you guys will be making some investments, suddenly pulling the trigger and deciding that you invest in something, whether that's creative projects or stocks. But some of you guys are actually possibly gonna be talking about trying to have a child or wanting to get pregnant. So watch for that, whatever it is. To me, it seems like you're gonna be having a good time it just may feel like there's more expenses more than usual. Same thing goes if you're launching a business or maybe you have a new hobby. Um, it's very possible with cancer being in your fifth that you're like, okay, I you know wanted to renovate a home and now I'm realizing how much it's going to cost and like maybe I have to take on some of these tasks on my own because it's going to be so pricey. Uh, so that's another way that I could look at it. The card that I get is the Hierophant. Interesting. So this is talking about tradition um, and kind of, I think in this case, uh, looking at, you know, what have you traditionally always done when it comes to dating, romance, children, and also your uh, values or your self-esteem. I kind of chuckle because I think the, the moon Mars coming in, excuse me, the moon Jupiter and Mars is in your second house coming into the square is like this reevaluation that's like, 
okay, if I am gonna be looking at parenting, I need to make more money. Or if I am gonna be participating in this hobby, you know, I, I'm gonna have to spend a little bit to gain something. The hair font can be also about some kind of like counseling or talking to somebody who gives you advice. So it can be that you go and talk to a financial um, person who's gonna give you advice. That's great with, I think, the moon and Jupiter. It's like, well, what do you invest in? What do you not invest in? Is it a good time to buy a certain stock? Is it a good time to buy a house? Somebody may give you advice and say, you know, if you're gonna do it, do it now. And you're gonna, you're definitely gonna feel it with this square over the first couple of days of like, well, was it a good move? And you'll go, yeah, it, it was a good move. It made me feel happy. It, it, it was, it was something that I did in the moment. Um, so if you're, if you're feeling a little risky or a little impulsive with money, I think it's a good idea to possibly talk to somebody who's gonna give you some direction. Um, cause the Hierophant is usually somebody who has some kind of experience. It can also be a parent. So if you're struggling with parenting or you're asking maybe your parents being like, what do you, what was it like when I was little? And then he'll talk to you and tell you about, you know, how challenging it can be and the, the need to put your own, um, needs kind of on the back burner in order to have a kid. So when in doubt, ask for advice and somebody who has been in this situation before. Okay guys, happy solstice. Uh, don't forget because it's a brand new energy and it's also the energy of water, going to rivers, going to the beach, um, taking baths, incorporate herbs that have to do with cancer. You can work with moonstone, you can work with opal, you can work with clear quartz, selenite, um, anything that is going to be um, helping you emotionally clear. So something I like to do on the summer solstice, open all the doors, open all the windows, burn the sage, burn the incense, get everything out, clean the house, um, and do all of that before the new moon in Cancer. So we wanna purge and clear stuff. Um, then what you can do is you can take all your spiritual baths and stuff right around the new moon in Cancer because you're gonna be feeling definitely very different emotionally once your house is in order physically or emotionally and spiritually. So I might do more on that in the week ahead because we've got some time, probably some time around the um, new moon in Cancer video. Yes, we have a new moon in Cancer coming around June 28th. I'm gonna do a video for that, I'm traveling a little bit this week and next week. So uh, we'll still continue with the same schedule, but um, I might put some stuff out a little bit early. Just a heads up, this Saturday, we are gonna be having on the 18th live tarot readings on the channel. So you can tune in at seven o'clock p.m. Pacific time, 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern. You can hang out with me on Saturday night. We can read some cards. All readings are gonna be by donation only. Um, if you consider joining my memberships, you're actually gonna get one reading once a month on the channel. You can support the channel and make it possible for me to create content like this. Guys, we've seen so much growth. It's amazing. Thank you so much for your comments, your interaction, your donations, your memberships. You guys make it possible for me to be able to do this every day. My goal is by the end of summer to create more content, not just the transits, not just kind of talking about what's going on also out in the world, but I want to create more continuing education. So by you guys supporting the channel, you make it possible for me to do that. Leaving me a comment and giving me a thumbs up is awesome. If you don't want to donate, totally understand. It's a, little, it's a little tough out there for a lot of people, but I keep coming back creating this content because I know that people can't always afford time to talk to an astrologer and maybe they're a little timid or they're unsure. Um, so this is, a, this is my kind of give back to the community. I'm very excited to announce that, like I said, we're gonna be selling the Astro 101 course soon. So if you missed that opportunity to take that class live, you can do that. You can still um, get the program this week. I am also going to be doing a uh, webinar. So I'm gonna be doing a webinar in July and it's going to be on a Sunday. Um, I'm gonna release the date soon and it's gonna be all about the North Node Uranus conjunction. I'm gonna go into how it's gonna affect all the 12 signs, a several hour uh, webinar lecture, PDFs, so that way you guys know what's coming and you can be prepared. We're gonna talk about history. We're gonna talk about what's happened in the past and my global predictions moving forward. Um, this will be the first webinar that I've done in a while. I used to do them with Astrolada and I did a lot of teaching locally in LA, um, but I'm excited to do this and it's gonna be a part of a series that I'm gonna be doing throughout the end of the year. So there's gonna be other webinars on the eclipses. There's gonna be some on the Mars retrograde. Um, so if you guys are looking for continuing education type stuff, 
one-offs uh, that you can uh, watch live or play back at a later time, I'm gonna start having those. So uh, that's also been made possible because we've seen so much growth between um, my channel and Beyond the Veil and also the Midheaven podcast. So once again, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'm hoping the solstice goes well for everybody. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what are you feeling and how do you ritualize uh, the solstices or the equinoxes? All right, guys, take care. I'll see all of you very soon.